So maybe Sam, now it's your your way. How do you set PEEP for your patient? And my first question will be, uh, is there any possibility to use zero PEEP for patients? Or no way for no PEEP? Thank you, Jean-Michel, for this uh, provocative question about uh, <laughs> the value of uh, the PEEP in the real life. That means you said about the zip PEEP, zero end expiratory pressure. This is probably was uh, used for several years, probably, but today we should consider absolutely a minimal level of PEEP for everybody, including both operating room patient, ICU patient, normal lung, and that's when you cannot use zero PEEP today. This is my message. I don't know if you agree with this. Absolutely agree. Oh, Maybe except massive pulmonary embolism and acute yes. core pulmonal, that but only few patients. Very few patients. So secondly, uh, as said by Mathieu, I think today we could not speak about tidal volume alone or PEEP alone. This is the main message. I think for the more younger, uh, for the resident, for the more younger physician, we should always speak about the couple, tidal volume and PEEP. It means nothing to speak about single tidal volume or PEEP. As clearly stated by Mathieu, Mathieu said, if you decrease tidal volume, you should avoid that the collapse or occurred by using a PEEP. That means open the line, yes, but keep it open and avoid the derecumment. Clearly stated by Mathieu and also evocated by uh, Liz. Then on this slide, as you said, this is a simple history about what we learn during the last 50 years in the RDS. As you said, in the red line you have the PEEP value and in the blue line you have the tidal volume. As stated by Mathieu, tidal volume coming from more than 15 milliliter per kilogram, more than uh, 30 or 40 years. And then during the last period, we decrease the tidal volume and increase the PEEP value to try to maintain the same airway pressure to avoid the collapse line. And then I summarized by three periods. That the first period with low tidal, low PEEP. The second period sti since uh, uh, the year about uh, 2000, um, uh, and uh, the second period with high PEEP. And now since, I said since 10 years, we try to use the personalized PEEP value. And as you see here, we don't know what will happen in the next year, and probably we will work on this personalized, as uh, the title of our uh, speech, with tidal volume and pit. And we should, I think, always speak about the couple. I don't know, it's clear, Jean-Michel, this uh, main uh, uh, summarize? I fully agree with you, and uh, we have to speak about PIP and tidal volume, but we have, we have both, Mathieu and you, so Absolutely. let's go, man. Um, to complete what said uh, about tidal volume by Mathieu, uh, what the evidence today about uh, the long discussion about low, means seven to nine centimeters of water versus high, PEEP means about 12 to 40. We have it, it was my question, uh, basically. <laughs> you can ask me. <laughs> so what is a good level of PEEP, Sam, please? Thank you, Jean-Michel. <laughs> and then, this uh, summarizes the three main first randomized control trial comparing two levels of PEEP, high and low. And as you see on the slide, this is a mortality rate coming from this uh, French, Canadian, and US uh, studies. As you see, unfortunately, you have non significant difference between this. And then, today, that means using high PEEP or low PEEP for a non selected patient is not probably the good way. Then we learn that we should change our paradigm, trying to probably uh, individualize the uh, PIP. Then in the last recent uh, epidemiological study, the lung cell study, we showed that high PIP is used less than 5%. High PIP meaning more than 15 centimeters of water. And then probably the future could be to try to optimize and individualize this. And then, as these slides, you like it, uh, by my friend, uh, Professor Emmanuel Futier, showed that too much low is no good, too much high 
it's no good. Then probably. But, but this is for Danny. What is the middle of the curve, please? <laughs> <laughs> How do you set the beep between too low and too high? Uh, Professor Futier called this area the Constantin zone. That means the protective ventilation area. That means it's probably between 5 to 15 <laughs> centimeters of what? Or between 2 and 20. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's, it's a good curve, the U curve. <laughs> then, as you know, uh, you have side effect of high PEEP. Then we could not use a high PEEP for everybody. As you know here, for example, you ask about without PEEP. Probably you improve your high hemodynamic status. However, if you use very high PEEP, such here, with a high PEEP more than 15 centimeters of water, you have side hemodynamic effect with a limited fluid return, and then probably you have very warm uh, uh, status. Then, this is a slide showing the main effect of low PEEP in red and high PEEP. As you know, you should manage uh, uh, this opposite two things. If you use low PEEP, probably you avoid the hyperinflation, but you induce, as said by Mathieu, atelectasis. However, at the right, if you use high PEEP, as says in the blue color, you induce more hyperinflation, as said, and then, but you probably avoid atelectasis. Then what should we do? This is a question. And then probably the future is f now we should change our paradigm and try to personalize, individualize the PEEP for each patient every day and change. This is the future. I don't know if it is correct for us. Maybe what totally you agree, yeah. Maybe with esophageal pressure. <laughs> but we are all agrees. But how do but you personalize how? the PEEP? <laughs> Thank Next question, <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> Jean-Michel. And then uh, maybe the question could be the same for Mathieu because we can do the same. That's why probably this slide could be the association of PEEP and tidal volume, probably. I don't know you have comment? Yes, you? but I, I would um, say that I uh, surely do not know how to do it. And yes. as you said, the complexity uh, comes also because you have to combine the PEEP setting, the tidal volume setting. And what you showed very well in, in your slides is uh, this atelectasis versus over distension risks. That is also com um, more complex because there are heterogeneous uh, regions of aeration in the within yes. the lung. And so how to better individualize this? Um, I guess I would ask you the question. <laughs> uh, I'm going to change the question. Uh, I think during my life I spent more than one year in a CT scan room with different patients with ARDS. Yes. Setting PEEP and tidal volume. And it's really easy to do that at bedside in CT scan. But I guess it's impossible in daily practice to go to the CT scan to set PEEP and tidal volume because, because it's more than one hour. And you go back to the ICU and maybe 10 minutes after you need to go back to the CT scan to change one more time because we give fluid or the patient is waking up. So how do you do at bedside, please? You're absolutely right. We don't have at the do bedside. Do you use a U-curve at bedside? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We have now, we improve our concept that we better understand. You're absolutely right. A new how paper. to translate this. This probably, probably in my point of view, I don't know if you share my position, that it's one of the best papers that more than 14, 40 years, uh, Peter Sutter said that probably we should not use the same p-value for every patient and you should probably try to adapt. And then he showed what the best surrogate is it the oxygenation evaluated by the PO2, or is it the shunt? Is it the respiratory mechanics using the total compliance, that means the compliance of the respiratory system? Is it the oxygen transport? And then, and then, and then. And the main message of this paper is that means every patient should have a different PIP. This is probably the main message of this paper. Another approach is uh, evocated by uh, Liz and Mathieu, I, uh, I believe about this, is uh, coming from Boston, from the group of Dan Telmore, I said as every patient is different about because the respiratory mechanism is different. And then, and then he tried to approach more and more the lung by using the approach of the pleural pressure evaluated by the esophageal pressure and try to maintain the lung open using the transpulmonary pressure, which is a pressure minus esophageal pressure, to try to maintain this not negative but positive. And to do this, you set 
and you titrate the PIP. Showing this slide, you have two groups, group if I, a group um, managed by esophageal pressure and group managed by uh, convulsional treatment. As said, using the uh, approach using uh, the guided esophageal pressure, that means the PIP set is often above 50 centimeter, uh, 15 centimeters of water. And then the mortality in these uh, studies shows significant difference from 39% uh, to 17%. That is very interesting. Now, the r this is a monocentric study, it's the first one, this is more the, the concept. And now uh, this group finished a large study, including 300 patients, and we are waiting for, in the next uh, weeks, the results for the confirmation. Another approach that I like it, because it's a very simple one, uh, c coming from uh, Jean-Jacques Ruby and uh, our French group, and we believe about this, that probably <coughs> these two patients have two different IRDS, have two different pathology, and then probably in the left part as called diffuse loss aeration, that means non-focal one, probably a high PIP could be interesting in early phase. And then in the other one, as you know, is a focal loss of aeration, probably high PIP could be harmful and probably you should manage low PIP. Then this approach is now uh, testing by the Constantin study called L Live Study, and uh, this study is probably the first which evaluate in the large population uh, coming from uh, um, the team of Mathieu and Jean-Michel, then showing that we should adapt the PEEP level differently. And this is a major study. We are waiting, we are impatient to have the same results. We don't know the results, but the approach is very uh, attractive because each patient have one PIP different. I don't know it's clear, Jean-Michel? Yeah, sure, it's clear. And uh, thank you, Sam. And we'll have the results of the live study in the next few weeks, I hope. hope. Uh, I know the results, but it's impossible to talk about no. today. <laughs> we have to publish the data before. So thank you very much.